Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Pino Trogo again from San Francisco State and this is the Info Design Data Visualization class. This is my second video in fall 2020 and uh, we're going to do a quick, um, not exactly a demo, but just a few tips on how to do um, category labels that is on the X axis at the bottom of a bar chart and also how to overlap bars in both Tableau and Excel. Uh, they're not going to be full-blown demos, they're just going to be um, just some direction of how, on how to do this, okay? And um, I will actually uh, remove my face from the video. That so that uh, we can focus on the stuff on the screen rather than the uh, rather than my face because um, I think the voice is enough okay I am going to find a couple of demos that I already sent you um, that are um, in PDF format so it just explains but they don't really show it and one is how to put ca uh, labels again on the uh, on the x-axis if the ears don't show up um, for our graph about deportations, okay? So this is the PDF and um, I'm gonna quickly show how to do it in, uh, in uh, Numbers, which is a file for the Mac, I mean a, a program for the Mac, and then we're gonna do it um, again putting the ears having the ears show up at the bottom. Um, and then we're going to do an Excel. I'm going to be using both my old Excel from 10 years ago and a newer Excel um, because the older one actually does a little neater way of doing um, diagonal labels at the bottom. Okay, so this is the PDF in iLearn. Um, it's called Category Labels, X-Axis and Numbers in Excel. So you can download this, and hopefully now with this video we can, uh, between the two, we should be able to do it um, easily. Okay, so I'm gonna put this away, and for this, um, well, I'll use the file that I um, posted already in iLearn with the data set, the one that's shorter so that would be, and right now, because I'm actually recording using um, using QuickTime, I can actually zoom in. So, um, yeah, so the file we want to use is this one, which is called RAM DAP 2000-2018. I realized I should have named it RAM RET for removed and returned. Instead, I named it removed and deported, but uh, that's the file, okay? So I'm going to open that. Um, and I'll open it straight in numbers if it works. Let's see. Fetching, fetching. That's taking too long. Let me see if I can just drag it to numbers, which is for Mac, uh, not for PC, but it's a uh, it's a nice program that uh, almost does the graph as you as you kind of are going to use it in the end. Um, okay, uh, so this is how the data set opens up. Okay, again, it's from the year two, 2000 to 2018. That means from um, the first year the last year of the Clinton administration to, I guess, the second year of the Trump administration. Um, so in numbers, what you want to do is, I mean, we could try several things. Let's try selecting the whole thing, the whole table, and then go to charts and select, uh, let's see, yeah, a bar chart and What's nice about numbers in this case is it does everything out of the box. So it's already got both both uh, columns, the removals and the returns, and the years all in the right place. Um, 
so not much there. But notice that there isn't all the years are not there. So we can try selecting um, selecting the uh, X or the category labels, or in this case the years. And let's see if we can format that to make it make it fit. Um, you can make the chart bigger. And now you get them all, but they're all kind of bunched up. It's not very nice. So let's select the ears right here. Um, and we're going to see if we can um, format that. Um, here it is under label angle. Instead of horizontal, we're going to do, uh, I prefer, let's see, yeah, left diagonal, meaning left to right, left diagonal going upward from the bottom left. And I feel that's the best, um, the best reading. Um, if you did it right diagonal, I don't think this is as good. Um, okay, so not much to that. I'm not going to uh, spend time now and actually talking about the colors although of course you could you know in, in um, you could change the colors and everything right now they even have fills which I'm not crazy so I would say just regular color fills and maybe um, let's select the other ones change the color because that's no good uh, pastel colors are best I feel um, so let's see if we can get colors that are different. Um, maybe not two pastels, but yeah, right there. Okay. All right. So that's numbers, um, and you can export this. Let's see. You can export to PDF. That's probably your best choice. So you can edit it later in Illustrator. All right, so I'm going to close that. Um, and actually, before I close it, um, one thing about these labels, we could make these labels a little better. Um, and I think here under axis, um, there is a way to make these big numbers be shorter, like deleting some zeros. Um, Anyway, let's summarize what this is. So what we have is the removals are the blue columns and the returns are the yellows. And remember the removals, the returns rather is better because you can come back to the country and you don't have a, a, a legal record, a legal uh, whereas removal means you've been really deported and you cannot come back for a while. Um, so notice how the two have sort of crossed and sort of changed directions. Um, okay, we can talk later how good or bad this chart is, sort of visually and the spacing and everything. But um, in this case, both columns, okay, the removals and the returns, displayed on this axis, on the x-axis, um, for the years, sorry. So those, the, they're displayed kind of sequentially for the years, but the data, you see, it's being picked up and it's displayed here on the, on the left side, on the, uh, on the y-axis. Okay, uh, so let's see if we can do this now in, uh, in Excel. All right, so now I'm going to take the same file, which by the way is a comma separated value file. That means comma delimited. Um, and that means it's a text file, but I can open it in Excel as well. Okay, if I open it in a text file, um, it would look like this and you should have a text um, in a text only program I meant to say so that it, it would look like that 
And even though this looks pretty ugly, it's nice and clean and you're and you know that there isn't any garbage, for example. Um, let's see, uh, yeah, for example, thousand separators, decimals, formulas, that kind of thing, okay? All right, somehow my screen was left. Um, and so instead we're gonna open it in Excel and I'm not going to look now at the um, uh, at the tutorial at the PDF. I'm going to hopefully remember what I wrote. Uh, so I will start first with uh, my old Excel because it can do the diagonal label the right direction, which I couldn't do in the newer Excel. somewhere. Uh, it's just a little slow. Okay, here it is. Um, so let's try selecting everything, okay? Um, see what that does, okay? So I select everything, then I go to insert and most commands are still the same, but insert chart gives me the options. In the newer Excel, you're going to have suggestions for charts, which actually can work very well. In this case, it's, it's all listed here. So we're going to take the column and we're going to say clustered column. Okay, and we get this. And it's not bad, but um, what it did, it grabbed the years and made it also into a column as well. You see there is a label year for the year. Now the reason we don't see any year columns is because they're in the 2000s, right? And since these numbers are much bigger for the deportations, they're basically just flat little lines down there. Obviously we don't want the year as a category. So what we need to do is select only um, the removals and the returns. And let's see, so I'm going to delete that. Oops. And now I'm going to try again, insert chart, clustered column. And now that's better because I only have removals and returns, okay. Um, so, actually, now I'm going to add something that I think will make this quicker. Um, the reason why the dates are not showing up, um, it's probably because we could probably change the dates to not be numbers and be text. Um, but before I do that, let's try the, the hard way. So what we can do now is to have that show up. We can highlight the, um, yeah, the horizontal category axis, okay? Then we can say um, format axis. And we're going to go to, let's see, text box. Uh, actually, sorry, cancel. We're going to do instead of, let's try select data. Yeah. Okay, let's repeat that. So we're going to say select data for the horizontal axis. So we're going to select the data. And what we want is we want to stick the, the, lab the years in that axis, right? So one way to do that is to use this field right here, the category X axis label. I believe this is the same in New York Excel. So there you can, you could type anything and it would show up, but instead, once we have the cursor there, we're going to select now the years 
from the data set and you can just oops yeah just grab like that okay just just select all those and you can see now it has actually uh, grabbed them put them all in there okay it's a formula but it's all that so I believe if you did this no that just closes it um, so there you go and actually did it so do you see here it actually did put those labels there um, all right and I like it because it put it in the right direction if we wanted to format now if we wanted to format it differently we could say now format axis okay and if we formatted the axis differently we could change the direction of the um, uh, of the labels right now if I say that horizontally would put them horizontally but okay so let me let me show you now if I open it with the new Excel or at least the new Excel that I have um, which is newer Excel is slow here we go okay so if we do the same thing we did before we select the two columns we go to charts somewhere here is charts um, Okay, insert chart, and okay, column, I don't know if it'll do it right off the bat, ah, it did, okay, um, by the way, if I did insert line, let's see what it does, yeah, that's not bad, so that's actually, you know, okay too um, it doesn't look like stuff or in this case sorry people um, so it's less it's less physical it's less concrete so people say that oops uh, bars and in this case I agree bars I think are better um, Okay, so again, we want the horizontal axis. We want to format the data there. Oops, let's see. Yeah, select data. Select data for the horizontal axis by doing right click. Um, and then uh, click here in the horizontal category axis and then once you're inside there um, select the years right here without the label year right just just the actual data um, and then say okay and it did it and because now they're you know spaced enough it's actually okay but they're really tiny right so probably you want them bigger and we want them um, at an angle in order to make them bigger and still fit so now if I do format axis um, tell me if there is a better way but I think let's see text axis here under I believe this is called text box no size and properties right there um, so if you click on that now we can pick um, See, I wish it had a, a diagonal choice, but it only has either horizontal, vertical, and stacked. We definitely don't want to do stacked. So we'll keep horizontal, and then the angle, if we say 45, it puts it going the other way, which is okay, but it's not my preferred choice. So if I try to do, instead of 45, what is 360 minus 45 um, uh, 315 maybe oh I can't do yeah okay it has to be either 90 um, yeah so there's no choice that's the only one so too bad um, okay that's that's it um, 
I will uh, stop this now. Oh, maybe I'll just quickly say that to print. So now that we want to print it, let's let's select the area we want to print. And actually, I'm just going to print the graph. So if I select that area, and I say print area, set print area. Um, now I'm going to make the page set up. Um, to make it fit, I want to make sure it fits because it's going to be vector, so I can always scale it up again. I'm going to make a landscape, and I'm going to make it at 50%. Um, and then I will save as. And here in plots and graphs, another, I'll save as PDF. So let's see what it looks like this time. Uh, it got cut off. Um, but actually, even though it got cut off, let's try to open it in Illustrator and see what happens. Uh, I have a feeling we will be able to recombine it by um, releasing the clipping mask, which is um, typically what, what the PDF will do. Um, and the information is there. So let, let's just try to do what page one, okay? Um, so now I'm an illustrator and it's cut off here. But um, if I select all, yeah, you can see that even though it's cut off, if I select all, wait, before it was showing, now it's not anymore. Um, I'll select all and I'll try object clipping mask release, yes, okay? So what happens is the data, is, the stuff is there, you just need to um, yeah, free it up. And this is good because one thing happened, and that is that my type somehow got scrambled. And this is a pain, but there is a way around it. It has to do with the PDF saving, so Save this PDF here. Ah, here it is. Sorry, I made a mistake earlier. It's not the Savers PDF regular. It's the Savers Adobe PDF. Okay, that should do it. That should fix it. The look to be working. Let's see. Yeah. That's not working. Oh, it is working. Never mind. It just took a while. Um, and let's try it again with Illustrator. Open with Illustrator. And in Illustrator, of course, you can make the chart beautiful. Um, changing the colors, changing the spacing. Yeah, it looks like it did it. Yeah, so that save as PDF is really critical when you're, uh, sometimes, not always, sometimes it will work. But um, so it also fit this time because I used, uh, but I would, I would still do select all object. Clipping mask, oh, you don't have to release it because I guess it's already all inside. Okay, so that was good. Um, yeah, I don't like these labels. Um, I will, um, I'll open the other tutorial which is showing how to overlap bars, which may not be, well, you could try for this assignment. Uh, it can be really useful. Um, and that is the other, um, I think I sent it via the forum messages. Um, so this is overlapping bars in Tableau and Excel. Uh, the PDF shows a data set for um, breast cancer, actually, which is what um, is what we'll be doing in the next assignment. Um, 
and as an option you'll be able, you also can continue on the um, on the deportation topic so we'll have two topics the breast cancer and deportations um, anyway this one shows yeah a different data set but you can um, you can apply the same commands to um, to the deportation um, data set and I'll show that right now and again I won't I won't go through this because it'll be too long I'll just do it um, and after we do it in Excel the final result being um, let's see this one okay showing some bars overlapping um, so in other words at first it might look like stacked bars but with stacked bars you don't know if it's one on top of the other or one behind the other um, whereas what we want to do is really show that there are two separate bars okay like this um, if these are if this is the same width you just never know is it one on top of the other or is one on top of the other mean one on behind the other or one on top of the other so um, and then this file um, shows also how to do it in um, Excel and for that I might have to come back to the tutorial because I, um, I don't remember yeah so we'll just we'll just keep this open in fact why don't we keep it open because I haven't done it in a while and this might help so we'll open the um, okay we'll open Tableau uh, download it and, and install it if you don't have it yet Is it opening? Yeah, should be opening. Just taking a long time. Here it comes. So Tableau, um, I've mentioned this before, I'm not a programmer and so I don't know every program in and out I know a little bit of everything and I like to concentrate on design more than on technical stuff although of course we need to we do need to know a little bit um, but there's tutorials all over the place so um, let's try um, let's try this so in, t in, in Tableau you need to connect to a data set so here you have different options um, and because my file is comma separated, I'll just say it's a text file, okay? So um, you open it, you find it. Uh, let's see if we find it. Here it is. Um, and now here's the data set. And you see Tableau is actually too smart uh, because it put back all the commas of the se thousand separators and it even made my headers with capital initials and that's okay because this is really just a kind of a skin um, so what we'll do is we'll do a new worksheet right here at the bottom okay we'll say new worksheet and I'm gonna move my little window out of the way um, here on the right there's all kinds of graphs that's like suggesting you what you can do if you take either dimensions or measures. Dimensions and measures are here on the left side. So in this case, the year is a dimension and the removal and returns are measures. Um, now, if we, so for bars, for example, let's see, here it is, one or more dimension, one or more measures. So what you want to do is you can drag you can drag stuff anywhere. Um, let's try dragging it here in these two fields of columns and rows. Um, and let's just say removals here. Now it made a line and I discovered that the reason it's doing that is because we have years, it just likes a line. It looks more like 
longitudinal data, right? Um, but let's delete that. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to, um, with the breast cancer data, they didn't do it. But here, because it is a year, kind of wants to make a line. So what I'm going to do it though is I'm going to change the data type. Instead of being a number, I'm just going to go for really dirty string, which means really text. Okay, now it doesn't even know it's a year. It is a year, but it doesn't care. And when I do that now, um, it should do, yes, bars. That's great. Okay, so do you can show this or unshow it. Um, so if we now do the second, the returns and put it here next to it, what they will do, it will create two graphs, okay? Which in this case, we don't want, but we could, and it will be very useful. So instead, um, what we want to do is we want to, um, we want to have the bars be on the so-called same axis. So th we want them on the same x-axis next to each other. And the x-axis, of course, is this, right? and this being the Y, right? Um, okay, so in order to do that, um, we will instead uh, grab the second one. Sorry, let me erase that junk there. So we have one. So in order to make them on the same level, so to speak, what we're going to do is we're going to grab returns here for measures, again on the left side, and we're going to um, drag it in the field. Um, so in other words, not here, but here. And you see how, let's see what happens when we do that. Something that I don't like at all. Um, <laughs> so. I'm going to go back. Okay, the errors, by the way, up here let you go back. It's kind of an undo and lets you see what, what step you're in. Um, so instead of that, um, when you bring it in, you see there's a box. It highlights a box. But notice that if I go a little over, it shows this dotted line. And that's what you want. That will do this, which is okay. Um, they're dots, so it's a plot now. It's a kind of a scatter plot, not really, but it's, it's more like a line graph. Um, but they are on the same scale. The only thing that's happening, uh, we should do this first, yeah, so that we don't get confused. The two scales are now different because, of course, the data for the two sets are different. The endings are higher in this one for returns. Um, so. Removals left, returns right. What we want to do is actually what's called synchronize the scale. So if I right click and I say synchronize axis, okay, I'm just going to zoom in again to show you how that is. Um, now the scales are correct. They're both the same on both sides. And now this starts to, to look this, you know, what we want. And what we can do now is change from dots. Oops. Um, we're going to change the mark label from, sorry, the mark type from circle. We're going to make bars. Okay. And then we're going to do the same with the other one. Okay. By the way, when you do that mark, mark type, you could even do it for like, uh, let's see, these are numbers. Yeah. It could be all kinds of things. So, for example, if these were like states, you could pick, you know, the name of the, 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 the shape of the state and it would actually display the little, little state. But I'm getting sidetracked here. So, mark type bar. Okay. And 
So that's good. But now again, what's happening is that um, the bars are on top of each other. So <laughs> the the returns have you know have gotten totally hidden. So what we can do, um, let's see if I can remember without looking. Okay, right here, we can select size over here in this menu right here. Okay, and there's a slider. It's really nice. So you can see. The changes automatic, and you can see why Tableau is very oh attractive. I guess is the word, but you you kind of have to learn all the buttons and all the menus. Um, so anyway, that's pretty good. So we'll we'll stick to that. Uh, we'll talk later about R, which is a you know kind of coding, but in R you can really see exactly what you're doing, and you know what's happening if you make a mistake. Anyway, the colors are perhaps not great. Um, so let's change them also here. And I'm going to do um, muted colors. Um, uh, lots of palettes, but let's just let's just stick to simple stuff for now. Let's make that do do it. Oh, I believe I have to either drag it. Actually, first I've selected, and then I have to click on the color I want, and then returns. I'm going to make those. These are probably too close, so maybe I'll make that green. OK. Yeah. Um, I think they need to be darker, otherwise they, they'll get confused with each other. So I'll do those blue. OK, save it. I need to print it. Um, so I would print it. And then again, I would pick Save as PDF, just to be safe. Um, Oh yeah, so in Excel, the trick once you get the bars side by side is to um, select one set of bars, okay, the one you want maybe to be on top, um, and then you plot the series on a secondary axis, which is actually the well, on the same, put them on top of each other, basically. Yeah, in this case, again, we'll change the, the gap between the columns. So let's try to do it, let's see if we can do it quickly. Um, so data sets right here. I'm going to op open it in. Um, in my newer Excel. These two. Insert chart, column. And I'll make it big. We're going to get the years in there again by, um, by say, select data. I think actually if you select the whole chart, it will bring this up. So again, here in the category horizontal, we're not going to stick the, uh, the years by putting the cursor there and then selecting the years here. And it does that funny thing. As you select, the chart goes up. I don't know why, but so now they're in there as a formula. And it's displayed. We won't deal now with the orientation. so. Um, Let's see, we select one of the series, this one, and then right click. Um, let's quickly look at the. Da, 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 okay. Format data series. Okay, so we have to do format series. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, it's actually the last button. I hope this is the same as your Excel, but it's it's format data series. Okay, so we select that, and then we just here we just change. You see, it's on primary axis. We're going to do it on secondary axis, and right here already you have actually a little bit of. Um, well, actually, you already have the commands that you need to make them thinner, again, because otherwise it could be confused as being one piece of information, and then on top of it, meaning like on its head, the other piece, whereas the other piece is behind, so they both start at zero. Um, and that's why stacked bars can be really confusing. So let's see if we change that. Well, I don't like it. Oh, it is live. Okay. Um, So let's play around. Yeah, here we go. That doesn't seem to change because it's exactly. Um, OK, yeah, so I did it now 500% because I want to get I want to get enough separation. Oh, notice how the axes are also wrong here. So let's remember to fix that. Um, and in Excel it's slightly different. Um, oh yeah, axis options. So in Excel what we have to do is we have to format the axis. So we'll take the axis and make the maximum for both the same. So 500, um, sorry, a million and 800 is here, right? So we'll leave that alone and we select this one. And let's see if I can do format axis. Um, yeah, here we go. So the maximum, we want to make it the same. So it was one. And that's it. I think we could, you know, we could fool around a little bit more, but that's how to do overlapping bars. I will quit now because otherwise this will be too long. Okay. So, yeah. One and eight, one million and eight hundred. So that. 1,800,000, that should do it. Um, oops, yes. So that's correct now, right? And again, you can now save this as a PDF, um, et cetera. All right, I'll just say goodbye. Um, so email me or, um, yeah, email me is the best or you can also make an appointment um, during my office hours and, um, and also use the forum, right, to post question and answers and hopefully they'll help everybody um, with their individual projects, okay? All right, take care. Have a good now Sunday. Today is Saturday. All right, ciao.